Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have 23 B DIY and finds for you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree. I want to start with the tear tray, and I want to do another B tear tray. That is one of my most popular videos ever here on YouTube, and also some other B decor as well. So to start with, I'm just going to use some of this Dollar Tree brown rope. This is like the nine and a half foot and one of those little plastic cloches from the Dollar Tree. I thought that was the perfect size for a little um, honey beehive on top of our little um, tear tray. And I think it's gonna be the perfect size. So this is pretty easy to make. It's just gonna be some hot glue and rope. And I just start right in the middle, hot gluing it to the center. Once you get it good and glued down, you can start wrapping it around. Now, since it's kind of like a curved shape, you kind of have to hot glue a little bit as you go. The tension's really not going to keep it on there. And so once I get like the very beginning started, I just cover like, you know, three or four rows and with hot glue and just wrap them around before the hot glue sets up. And then we're just going to keep doing that wrapping all the way down. Whenever you do a rope project like this, it's gonna take a lot more rope than you think it's gonna need. So let me show you about how far one package goes. And then um, you can just kind of start a new one. You're not really gonna be able to see the transition too much, but we're gonna make it look like a little honey beehive. So we'll be able to hide any of that too. And so we're just gonna kind of start right there where we stopped. If you put a little bit of hot glue there, it's gonna keep your edges from fraying and kind of tidy that all up. I thought we could just, I don't want to make it like a traditional bee scab, you know, with like the handle on top. I just wanted that simple honey beehive shape there. And then we can decorate this with some little bees. So that looks good. I'm not going to use the bottom or anything. We're just going to use that part. Once I get it all on there, I always like to use a lighter, kind of burn off any of the fuzzies on there. Give it a little bit of a cleaner appearance. And once I get it cleaned up, I just kind of want like to make an opening on there. And the easiest way to do that I found out in the rope is just use a little paint. So I'm just using some black acrylic paint and just going to uh, paint a circle right here, kind of about halfway up so you can kind of see it um, from your tear tray. And then we're gonna decorate this with bees. I have some of those little wooden bees from the Dollar Tree. I have found that I only bought like maybe a couple of bags of those this year. I really wish I would have stocked up because I have had a hard time trying to find any more. So I'm gonna use every single one that I have left today. I wish I had more, they're so cute. They also have these like in the ladybugs as well. But I'm just gonna attach them with hot glue even though they do have sticker paper on there just to make it a little bit sturdier and maybe have a couple of them going in the hole and just kind of scatter them all over. They're super fun. They would probably be fairly easy to make with some half beads, but you're gonna have to do some pretty um, good detail painting on those. So that is what it looks like with four. I was thinking I probably need to use more. So I went and grabbed a couple more and we're just gonna add a few more to our little beehive. Maybe one right on top and maybe one on the side. I kind of like them to be a little bit off center there. And I think this is gonna be a really great size for the top of our tear tray. Here is our little beehive. These are super easy to make and very cute. I've done like several versions of this. I've done like a large bee scap for my last bee tear tray and then I've kind of done a smaller version with my bee coffee bar this year. So I wanted to do this tear tray because it's going to coordinate really well with my bee coffee bar. If you haven't seen that, I have a bee coffee bar and another bee DIY video where I did a lot of bee wall decor. 
Now check out, this is one of the newbie pieces that they have at the Dollar Tree. They have a ton of new bee pieces that they have just been getting in at my stores. But I thought we could take this and kind of um, make it look a little bit better. I'm just gonna use a Target paint pen. This is yellow orange. And I'm gonna kind of sketch that honeycomb pattern along the sides to kind of bring out that detail on that. It's kind of um, an unpainted like white ceramic finish on this. So I think it's kind of designed to be painted. They did do like a gold kind of stamp on the top of it, but I kind of wanted this to be yellow. I wanted to do like maybe like a softer yellow than what you would expect. I think this is called like sun bright yellow. And I just want to go all over that now, getting in between all the different little pieces of the honeycombs. And then before it dries, I'm just going to go in there with a wet wipe and kind of wipe off the excess paint trying to get that yellow orange to kind of show through to give it a little bit more detail on the side. It didn't show through as much as I would like, but it was kind of a little bit of a subtle detail. And I think I am gonna go ahead, you know, and just leave it as a box like that with the ceramic top. The B is super cute on there. And I kind of want to do a similar technique with that. It does have the gold stamping on there, but I do go in with my yellow orange and just kind of sketch out it's a raised surface where the bee is, so it's pretty easy to color that in. And then I'm gonna go over that with yellow as well. I thought about kind of making it two-tone with the white and the yellow, but I decided to make it all yellow. It's super cute. Just a little like trinket box. And wait till you see some of, some of these items that I found at Dollar Tree. They are so cute. And the same thing, I am just gonna wipe off the excess with a baby wipe kind of revealing the gold finish. I found my yellow orange really didn't stand out too much on that, but more of the gold stamping that was on there kind of already did. But I'm just trying to remove as much yellow paint to let that shine through. I kind of want it to look like a modeled appearance, but I do want a little bit of yellow orange. So I do go back and add just a little bit more. Add that more orange color just to provide a little bit more contrast. And I think that looks pretty good. A little yellow honeycomb dish with a little golden bee on top. And I do like that color of like that gold stamping that's on there. We're going to use a lot of golds, a lot of yellows with these DIYs. But I think it turned out pretty cute and it was pretty easy to put together. The next DIY is this little Be Kind, Be Sweet, Be Humble wood box. It's one of those little light up boxes from the Dollar Tree. And I think these are new. I really liked this style. Some of them had some of the more like colorful bees and stuff on there, but I really kind of liked just the simple brown and white feel of this one. And I thought we could probably update it quickly with some color. So the easiest way to do that is just to use a paint pen. I'm using that same yellow orange color. And you know what? We're just gonna kind of color this in a little bit. Like it's body, it's different stripes. I'm going to leave the wings like white and the legs and the head and everything like that is perfect. So just a very easy update on this. Just adding a little color to each side. And this is a nice tall piece. I think it's going to be good on the top tier and it even lights up. So that's pretty cool. And I'm going to show you, we're going to go ahead and make all of these little bee DIYs. And then I'm gonna show you how we put our tear tray together and other DIYs and finds for the kitchen as well. So I think that was very easy to put together. I really like this one. What do you guys think about this little bee box? I think it's so cute. Now the next one's gonna be super easy. Check out these new little jars. So. It's kind of like an orange clear glass, but it has this adorable little metal bee on there and it's tied on with twine, which I kind of like. I think you could use this for like a candle holder or something like that. I am gonna make it just into a small vase. I always like to have like a little flower display or some kind of greenery on my tear tray. It really makes it look nice. And I think, you know, for like a spring, a summer feel, I think it's gonna be perfect. So I just kind of updated um, the bow on there with the twine just to kind of um, clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit shorter. 
And then these are the flowers we're going to use. They're just called wildflowers from the Dollar Tree. And they're just the small yellow ones. And I think like one bunch of these is going to be perfect to fill that up. It kind of just reminds me of like a honey pot. It's got that feel. It's kind of got the color of honey um, that the jar is as well. And so we're just going to simply cut off the flowers on this arrangement. Um, I'm not going to include any of the leaves. I'm just kind of um, taking the top parts off of these and just leaving the leaves on the stems. Now, I didn't really want something that was gonna take away from the effect of the jar because it looks really cool, um, like floral foam or anything, but, like, but I kind of really needed this to stay together and kind of have some area where you could stand the plants up in there. So we're just gonna use some Dollar Tree white sand. It's not gonna take away from the design, but it kind of gives me something to hold these flowers in so they kind of won't be falling all over the place. So I'm just making sure they're all pushed down inside. It kind of gives you the stability of some floral foam, but it, you're not really gonna have to see that in there. You're gonna see that cool pattern on the side. So just a quick, easy tear tray DIY. And check out that adorable little honeybee charm on there. I was blown away by how many new bee items they have. He's so cute. And this is how it turned out. Okay, our next one. This is a stepping stone. Now, these are not very large. They have a couple different ones. Uh, there is this one that's bee kind, and then there's the um, there's a girl gnome one as well. I think this one was a little bit cuter, so I picked this one up. Now, the colors are kind of rough on it. You know, it is a stepping stone, but... It's not really large enough to use as a stepping stone. I think it's um, more suited to a tear tray size. So we're just gonna update the color here using that some like same like sun bright yellow for his little hat and the gnome body. I like like the stamped concrete look, but I thought the colors on this were a little bit too distressed. And we could kind of use the same color that we've been using on the tear tray. I'm also gonna update his little beard, make it look more white. Basically any of the colors that I can get to on him pretty easily here. And it is stamped in there, so it kind of makes it easy, easy to paint. Also, I thought maybe a very soft pink on his little nose to clean that up as well. Now, there is like a little be on there and so I do touch that up a little bit with a, just a black paint pen trying to give it like maybe some stripes not real detailed and then I thought you know he kind of needs like some bee stripes on his hat to kind of give him more of a bee look he is holding like a little bee skep and but I thought stripes would make it look like you know Kind of like that gnome we did on our last bee tear tray where we made the bee gnome. He had a nice bee striped hat and it totally gives you that bee vibe. So they had the lines stamped on there. So I just went in there with a paint pen and just threw over the lines. Then I'm going to go back and fill that in to give you some bee stripes up here. I think that gave him a lot more character and made him super cute. I'm also going to go in and do like the brim of the hat and paint it the black color as well. Now I thought it looked a little choppy. You know, you can kind of get that with a paint pen. So I do go back and kind of go over it with just some black acrylic and a small brush just to make him look even better, touch him up a little bit. And I think he turned out so cute. And you know what? He was just the perfect size to use on a tear tray. I also picked up some of these like in the starfish and seashell and stuff like that. I'll probably be using for a beach tear tray as well because I think they're much better suited to that. He kind of does stand on his side. Um, he kind of wants to kind of lean to one side a little bit there with the flat part of the bottom on there, but I think it is super cute. And I think I can just lean him up against like, you know, the pole in the middle of the tear tray um, and he'll stand up on his own. Now, the next is a dollar spot find. This was from Target Dollar Spot. This beautiful little metallic gold bee, it was $5, which a little bit more than I would like to spend on this, but I think it was so pretty. And it was kind of one of my inspiration pieces 
for the whole tear tray, I want to kind of use this gold in some of the DIYs today. So we're not going to really do anything to him. We're just going to display him as is. Isn't he pretty? So that was from the Target Dollar Spot. Now we're going to do a candle DIY. Now these candles are from the Dollar Tree. They look like honeycomb. They're so cute. They're like just the right color and they have that great like honeycomb pattern all over. I thought we could do just a very simple rustic little um, base for the candle using one of these wood slices from the Dollar Tree. I thought I could combine like the wood slice and then some of you know, the little wood slice sticks that they have at the crafter square. If I can find like three of them that are relatively flat and about the same size, we can make a simple little stand for this. Since we've already got like the honeycomb and the candle, I'm not really going to do much of a bee theme with the candle holder, but I think it, I just kind of wanted it to look rustic and I think that's going to look really good together. So those three look good. So just three of them for three little legs. And then we're just going to attach those on here with hot glue. And I love these little woods, the wood slices from the Dollar Tree. I used to always have to pick those up at Dollar General. And you get two of those for $1.25. And check out this cute little candle holder. I love it. And we're just going to attach it with a little hot glue so it doesn't kind of like fall off all over the place. Maybe around the rim might work a little bit better. And you know, if I had any extra of those little wood bees, I might add some to that as well. But I think it's really cute on its own. Our little honeycomb candle with a little DIY candle stand. Have you guys seen those candles? I don't remember seeing those like last year or the year before. I think they're so cute. They're perfect for a bee tear tray. I love the color on that one. Okay, y'all, this is my favorite Dollar Tree find. Like probably ever. How cute is this little bird cage with the bees all over it? Can you believe this was only $1.25? Y'all are always asking me if I'm getting this at like Dollar Tree Plus or something like that. But we do not have those stores yet here in Florida where I live. And this was just $1.25. It's got like a little tab on there. It even opens and everything. The only thing I wasn't super crazy about is the colors, the black and like the brass color. So I thought we could use that little bee from the Target Dollar Spot Inspiration and paint this like a metallic gold. So I did have some metallic gold spray paint, and I think that's going to be a really easy item to paint. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to grab the little birdcage and it, uh, the spray paint, go outside and give it a quick spray and look how pretty it turned out. I think it looks even better now, and I just really love it. Now, I don't really want to put like bees or anything like that inside, so I thought it would be really cute to kind of like use it as a display for like some greenery or something like that inside. So I think that's what we're going to do. So we can open it up to make it a little bit easier, but you can kind of just feed in from the side. And this is some new greenery that I found at the Dollar Tree. It says eucalyptus stem. Kind of has that like appearance of a boxwood, but very high quality of greenery. Now some of these kind of just pop off like that. And I, I think we're going to need most of this, probably all of it, to fill it all the way up. Now, some of it I still do kind of have to cut. And they do have a wire in there. So you're just going to have to either cut through that or kind of bend it to break them off. But if I could have like a bigger piece like that where more of the pieces stay together, I think that's going to work really well. I don't want like a long stem sticking out. So I do make sure that I kind of try to tidy it up a little bit. And kind of give me a starter piece a glued down there. I am going to go in and just kind of cut all these apart. I got another nice bunch here. And I think this looks really pretty in there. It's kind of subtle. It's not going to give you like a really loud piece. Like if you were to do like a yellow flower or something like that. But I think it coordinates with like the metallic gold really well. And I love this birdcage. 
I found a lot of this newbie DIY stuff at one of my larger Dollar Trees the other day. Um, that big one that used to be a Walgreens, and this was the first thing I found when I came in the store. How cute is this? I think the gold metallic paint just makes it look so much better. And I think it looks really cute with all the greenery inside. You guys are going to have to let me know in the comments below, have you guys seen this yet? I cannot believe it was $1.25. It's a really nice size as well. Okay, next DIY. I thought we would take one of these little like... Um, hexagon shapes, um, little wood chunky signs, and some honeycomb burlap from the Dollar Tree. We could do a cute little sign. This um, shape sign is like just the right size for a tear tray, and it's nice and chunky. And we're just going to stain all the sides of this with some antique wax by Waverly. And, um, you know, it is on a tear tray, and so I'm also going to stain like the back of it as well. Um, just in case you can see it from the other side. So I'm just going to remove the label on the back, give it a quick stain. Now on the front side of it, we are going to use the burlap. Isn't this is really cute? It's one of their new bee designs. It is the honeycomb and I thought it would be perfect for this shape. So we're just going to cut off a piece of this and we can cover the front of that sign. Just a fun texture and a really easy sign. So I'm just gonna use a Sharpie to kind of draw on the back of it so I'll know exactly where to cut that out and just cut inside the lines. Um, I'm just gonna Mod Podge that on. This is not a real intricate shape, so I don't think we'll have a much trouble with fraying with that, but I just put down a nice a thick layer of Mod Podge all over the front of the sign and just lay the burlap on there. Isn't that cute? And, you know, they have like the honeycomb fabric and stuff like that, but I think the burlap is even cuter. So once I get it on there, I do go over the top of it with some more Mod Podge, sealing it down because, you know, the Mod Podge ne doesn't necessarily want to stick to the wood. You're definitely going to have to go over the top as well. I do clear up any of the fraying on the side just by trimming that up and giving it a good dry. Now, I thought the cutest thing would be to use some more of these little wood bees, and these are my last two. But I thought they would be the perfect decoration to finish off this little honeycomb. And it doesn't really matter where you put them. I'm just going to kind of scatter them, one here and one here. And I'm not going to add a word or anything to it. I think it is perfect as is. I love the texture of the burlap on there. And the stained wood sides look really cute as well. Aren't those bees cute? Were you able to find the little wood bees at your store? I really wanted more and I have been to every a single store and I have not been able to find any more of these. <laughs> They're so cute. But this is our little honeycomb sign DIY. Now check out these. They have some really cute bee signs. And this one is the bee kind one. It is almost perfect. The only thing I'm not super crazy about on this one is that the edges are kind of like an unfinished wood. And so I thought we could kind of cover that up with some of that honeycomb fabric from the Dollar Tree. I love this and the colors look great together. I thought we could just kind of make a strip of fabric with that. I kind of want to get some straight cutting lines here too. So I'm just going to use my cutting mat and like my little Fisker roller to kind of give me a, a straight line here so we can kind of make a ribbon. Now they have like more than one kind of this honeycomb fabric at the Dollar Tree. The other one is like a little bit brighter and like it's a little bit larger, um, the print on there as well. And they also sell that in a strip already. So you might be able to find that as well. Once I get a straight line, I'm gonna kind of just see how big I need this to be. And basically, I'm just going to cut enough of this where it will cover, you know, the two sides and the top. There's really no need to cover the bottom of this one, but it's just going to give a fun little detail to an already really cute sign. They also have like a white sign like this that says, be humble. 
And I used that on my coffee bar. Um, I did a bee coffee bar this year and it turned out super cute as well. So you'll have to check that one out too. And I thought about using, I had another one of those. I thought about using it for this tear tray as well, but I really kind of liked the yellow feel of this one. So I'm gonna use some Mod Podge and just glue that all around the edges. Just a quick way to kind of, you know, disguise that cheaper looking wood around the sides because the front of it is just perfect. There's no glitter or anything. I think the colors are perfect. I just wanted to do a quick little frame. Just, you know, a way that you can take a Dollar Tree item and just make it a little bit better. Isn't that design so cute? And it's like a slatted wood on the front as well. It's not like a faux slatted, it's actually slatted. And I'm just going over the top of all sides with a little bit more Mod Podge to make sure everything is secure and trimming up any loose strings. And this is how it turned out, isn't it cute? Here is our little bee kind. And I'm trying to use like, this is kind of one of the yellows I'm trying to use a lot on these DIYs. I think it's so cute. And I think it looks great with that little honeycomb border. Okay, next DIY. This is another new find, I think. I've never seen this before at Dollar Tree. It is a little gold honeycomb candle holder. Now, it is already metallic gold, but it's kind of a different shade of gold than what we used on the bee and the birdcage and stuff like that. So I'm gonna take it outside and give it a spray of spray paint as well. And look how it kind of changed the vibe of it. I really think it looks way more high end. So I'm just gonna pop a Dollar Tree tea light in there. And I think this is so cute. I love how like I had this and like the little bee um, from the Target Dollar spot, just some for some gold accents. And I think this is so cute. I'm using a real candle in there, but you could do battery operated or even like a votive candle. It's all basically gonna fit. And another a new BDIY item, look at this. This is one of those little wax warmers with that gold stamp B on there. And it is white as well. So I thought we could do something similar to what we did to the little trinket box. So we're gonna go in there with that like sun bright yellow and a brush and we're gonna kind of go all over. I'm not really gonna use this as a wax warmer. I thought instead we could kind of make this look like a honey pot. So I thought this was gonna be just perfect. So using a brush so I can kind of get in all of the ridges there. You also have some of the little hole cutouts in the side as well. And then kind of wiping off the excess so that gold stamp kind of shows through on our bee like we did before. I get it all painted. I'm also gonna go over the top of it with the yellow as well. But my plan is to try to fill that in with like some faux honey. I know that a lot of people do like the faux honey with like the orange or like brown tinted glue sticks, which I don't really have any of those. So I'm gonna show you how I was able to kind of still make that work without those. So I'm just gonna go in and just kind of start filling it up with hot glue. Now, you know, there is a little bit of a reservoir there to, you know, store the wax melt. So it does take a quite a bit of hot glue to get this filled up. But every now and then I'm just kind of pulling it out so it will kind of drip along the sides to kind of make it look like honey dripping over the sides of the honey pot. Now, when you're trying to get like a thick layer of the glue like that, you're gonna have to kind of let it set a little bit between coats to kind of let it dry up a little bit, but then you can go in and kind of fill it up a little bit more. So I'm trying to do the edges and then I'm gonna go in and fill it up with more hot glue and doing more like little honey drips as I go around. And it's not gonna be overflowing or anything like that. I just kind of want it to make, uh, look as full as I can. I think that looks pretty good. So what I do is I kind of like walk away from it just for a few minutes to let that start setting up. 
if you want to speed that up a little bit, you could always pop it in the fridge. It's going to make that dry. And then I thought we would just use like some gold metallic paint. This is the gold metallic paint from Dollar General. It's super inexpensive. And I'm just using a brush and going over and painting the hot glue to give it that honey color. So we're going to have that gold accent, but we're also going to have like that gold honey color against the yellow honey pot. And it did take a couple coats of this to kind of get it more of a bold color where you could really see it. I really don't want that translucence of the hot glue, but I'm using a tiny brush so I can kind of go around the edges and get those little drops that we went around the edges to. And I will have to touch it up a little bit with some yellow paint because it's kind of hard to kind of stick with just one color there when it's kind of leaking around the edges. And isn't that a cute little honey pot? This was so easy to DIY and it was really fun to kind of do some faux honey on top. So once I get it all touched up, I think that looks pretty good. I think I have like the right amount of paint on there. And then, you know, you're supposed to put like a candle inside. And so I am gonna put a candle inside, but again, we're not gonna be using this like as a wax warmer. It's just gonna be kind of for decor. Isn't it cute? I love it with a little gold stamp B on the front as well. And here's our little yellow honey pot. It does kind of have like a little dotted um, flying pattern on there as well, which is super cute. And I love the little honey. That's my favorite part. Okay, I wanted to do something fun for the top of the tear tray and I just sometimes like to add a large piece. So I thought one of these little metal yard stakes from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. It's got a great size B on there. The only challenge is trying to get the stake off there without mutilating it so much. So I'm trying to kind of just trying to rock it back and forth. I notice it's really connected two points. Um, and it does kind of rip a little bit of a hole in it by the time I could get it off, which was not ideal, but you know what? We're gonna work with it. I am gonna need to tie it to the tear tray as well, so I can always cover that up with twine. Now, the wings are like kind of a bright rainbow effect, and I wanna tone them down a little bit, so I just use some of that gold acrylic. It's okay if some of the colors shine through, but I just didn't want it to be quite so bright. And then I'm just gonna take some Dollar Tree twine and kind of wrap that around the body portion. I do want to kind of pull it down a little bit to kind of cover up the little hole boo-boo that we have right here in the middle. And that's gonna serve two purposes to cover that up and also tie it to the top of my tear tray. The tear tray we're decorating today is my wood two tear tray. And it's kind of got like an oval ring at the top. So I think we can just tie that up there, kind of make it look like he's flying away. And the other side is black, so I think that'll be super cute as well. And this is how he looks. I just kind of tied him to one side. The legs are kind of bendable as well if you need to work yours around whatever kind of tear tray you have, but I think he looks really cute right on top. What do you think? Okay, next DIY. I love to do like a like mini pennant banner, and I found some great bee burlap rib. Uh, fabric at the Dollar Tree. So I just took some twine. I kind of measured exactly how long I need that to go all the way around and gave myself some extra space. So kind of a marking where I'm going to be tying, tying that together. And then check out this burlap. They have these bees with the yellow and black. They also had like just a black print bee without the yellow. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Now, I want to make like little pennant triangles with these. And you know, the bee kind of naturally kind of already has that shape, but I want to do a mini pennant banner. So I'm definitely only going to be able to fit one in a little triangular piece, but you know what? I think we can make it work. So I just kind of start cutting around the bee. I cut it flat at the top and then kind of cut it down into a point like a little burlap pennant. Isn't that cute? It's okay if it frays a little bit. I kind of want that rustic look for this little mini pennant banner. And what we're going to do is we're going to hang this around the top tier of my tear tray. 
And this is going to be one of the finishing pieces for the tear tray. Um, I have this and a couple other items left to do. And then we're going to move on to some more bee DIYs. You guys seem to really love the bee DIYs. So I thought I would make another large bee video. I've had two this year. I had like a lot of bee wall decor and then my bee coffee bar. And they were so much fun. So I think this is going to finish off like my kitchen area. This is going to so go so great. It's like in the same room as my coffee bar. So that's what four of them look like. It, you do kind of have to waste a little bit of the fabric um, to be able to get like that right triangular shape um, on your bee and then not like you kind of mess up the bees to the side of it. So I'm just kind of working up and down. And I'm just gonna, I don't really know at this point how many I'm gonna need, but I'm just gonna cut like just probably about eight of them. And they don't have to be perfect. And you know, a couple of them were a little bit bit, but I think that's gonna be okay. So I did a total of eight and then I thought we could start kind of spacing these out. From where I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna just kind of start putting pieces maybe about two inches in. And I don't want these to be super close to each other. So I was thinking about four inches in between each one. And as you can see, I am just hot gluing that directly onto my twine. Super easy, but also, you know, you're not gonna be able to move it around side to side to even it out. So it is kind of important to measure each piece so you can get a relatively good fit. And we're just gonna keep working along. This turned out so cute. I wanted to do like a different treatment kind of for the top and the bottom tier of this tear tray. And I had so much fun putting this together. And I'll take you through all the steps as well because we're totally going to be staging that too. Whenever you're just gluing directly on there with your hot glue, you're gonna have a little bit of mess. So. I always clean that up really easily with my heat gun. And I ended up only using six of them. I guess I spaced them out a little further than I thought. But this is what I did. I just tied them around the tier. And I actually tried to make it where some of them were like a little higher than the others all the way around the tear tray in just a fun, cute little bee detail. To, this is the wood tear tray that we're DIYing today. Now this is a honeycomb satin ribbon, also from the Dollar Tree, a nice wide ribbon. And we're also going to use that. This is what we're gonna use here along the bottom tier. Basically, I just cut a long enough piece to overlap slightly and kind of hot glued that to itself, tight enough where it would kind of stay on. And I think that's gonna be another fun touch to this tier tray. Now we are going to stage this tear tray where I'm gonna take you through and show you how I put it all together. And I always like to have a little filler. So this is some of their lamb's ear from the Dollar Tree. Can you believe Dollar Tree has lamb's ear now? I was so impressed. So I picked up some of these. I'm gonna cut some of these down and that's gonna make a really fun, like fuzzy filler. I think it's gonna go great with the bee theme. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of DIYs let you know about my Facebook group. I have it linked below. Come join us over there. You're gonna be so impressed with how crafty all the crafty beach bumps are. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube on all of those. Okay, on to some larger bee DIYs. We are gonna stage that, but not until after we get all of these DIYs done today. Now, the top sign, brand new. I've never seen those before. It's great because they kind of changed the image and made it more bee theme, right? The other one was more like had a saying, just some black drawings of some flowers, but I think it coordinates well too. So I'm just gonna glue the two together to kind of form that cool honeycomb shape. And I love the bee part, so we're gonna leave that alone, but we will kind of disguise the bottom to kind of make them go together. Now they're kind of a heavy sign. I wanna make, um, a sign that I can hang. So I want to make sure this is secure. So I'm also going to reinforce it on the back a little bit just with some popsicle sticks. I just cut down a couple pieces and we're just going to hot glue that right on the seam. 
And I love that they changed these signs up because, you know, as crafters, we love crafting with these and trying to make them our own. I actually used one of these to spell out the word B on my um, coffee bar video. And usually we're always trying to kind of disguise what's already on there, but the one with the B stuff on there is perfect. So I take some Dollar Tree twine. I am just gonna make some knots on each side. We're just gonna make a simple hanger because I want this to be a hanging B sign decor. And then just using my staple gun, we're just gonna staple this on both sides. I went back and forth whether I should cover the middle part of the honeycomb with like some fabric or some burlap or something like that. And I couldn't decide whether I should or not. I did want to do it like a bee and a flower though. And so I'm going to leave it open. You'll have to let me know in the comments below if you think I should put something under there because maybe I still can, right? And so I just use one of these little flowers from the Dollar Tree, a cute little sunflower just off of an arrangement of those from the Dollar Tree. And I just hot glued it over to one of the corners of like that open hexagon area, but I don't want to cover any of that cute bee stuff that's going on at the top. Now, these are from like the spring and garden section at Dollar Tree. These are the little chalkboard ornaments, but they have a bee shape. Isn't it cute? And I thought he might be just the right size to kind of cover up the writing that's now kind of upside down here on the bottom. Because the rest of like the black flower sketches are going to coordinate well with the top sign, which kind of has that feel too. I just kind of need to disguise that part right there that has the writing. Now the black chalkboard sign is really black. So I'm going to work on the just the plain wood side. I thought that would be easier to paint and personalize. And we're just gonna fill in the hole in the ornament, you know, with some spackle. And then we can start painting this. I am using kind of a brighter yellow color. I think this is called bright yellow um, acrylic paint and just going over the body of the bee. And then using a tiny brush and some black, we're gonna go in and give them some little black antennae. And then for the wings, I couldn't decide what to do. I kind of wanted something more translucent, but I kind of want that wood feel too to go with some of our other DIYs today. So I do Antique Wax by Waverly, but I kind of follow that up with a baby wipe right away to give me a light stain. And I think this turned out cute. You could also do like a, like a gray stain or something like that with acrylic. That would be cute as well. And now there are little lines on there, like little cutouts. So I'm kind of going to use those as reference to kind of paint some little bee stripes on our little bee. And then maybe one here at the bottom too, where you would have like a little bee stinger. I'm not going to do a face or anything. I kind of want more of an abstract look, but I do kind of want to bring out some more details in it. So I use a black paint pen. And we're just gonna kind of sketch out our body parts. Just to add a little bit more color and definition to them. Now on the wings, you could do like some lines and stuff like that as well, but I kind of already have like that wood grain on there. So I'm just gonna kind of outline them as well to kind of make them pop. And then we can add this cute little wood bee ornament to our little honeycomb. I love those signs. The only thing I don't like about them is I wish that they nested together a little bit better so you could kind of stack them on top of each other, um, you know, both going the same direction and you could kind of build whatever shape you wanted. But this is one way you can use them together to kind of make a fun B shape. So I was trying to determine which way I kind of want to, you know, tilt him, how he's going to work and how he could cover up the words that are just below. I think I like him better this way, so we can just glue him on to the frame of that piece and just glue his wings on there and a quick affix to that little area of the sign. But I like the rest of it. I love the top part with the little beehive, the bee happy and the bee, it's so cute. Now you can kind of still see where I spackled in the ornament hanger hole and it was bothering me. So 
I took some Dollar Tree twine and just tied off like the tiniest little bow. It's gonna have to be tiny for this guy. And I'm just gonna glue that over the top. It's gonna add just another fun texture and decor piece, but it's also gonna serve the purpose of kind of disguising that hole there in it. And here is our little be happy sign. I think this is so cute. And it would look great for spring or summer. I'm really digging the bee on my coffee bar, so I might leave that up all summer. I haven't decided. I might do another like patriotic coffee bar. I haven't done one of those since I installed my bigger coffee bar. But isn't this cute? I think this would be pretty with any kind of like a yellow flower since you've got all those yellow flowers in the sign. And I think it would be cute too if you put something behind that open one as well. Here's a whole shot of it. Some of you guys have been requesting that I show you the whole shot, and so I'm trying to include that with all of my DIY videos. Okay, next DIY. This one was so easy. So I found this little hexagon-shaped box. It's kind of like a geode background, and as you can see, it's not put together well, but that is going to be easier for us, right? So I'm just popping the back of it off. And we're gonna get this cool frame that's like kind of large enough to kind of sit on its side. And this is the back of it. Now, I don't really wanna cover that crazy design up with my burlap. I think you might be able to see it through. So it's gonna need to be the back. So I'm just gonna take some cheap wood contact paper from the Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna cover that up so that it'll have a nice finished back. And then I just use sandpaper to go around all of the edges and it's gonna give you a quick, easy cut. Now we can decorate this backside, which was just the plain brown. It's gonna work way better with the burlap. And for this one, since we're doing like that um, hexagon shape, you know, the honeycomb, I thought it would be perfect to use some more of this burlap. I think it's so pretty. I am loving all of the burlap from Dollar Tree is so fun. And I used to have to go to, you know, Walmart to get plain burlap, but not only do they have the plain burlap in the brown and the white, they also have all these fabulous prints. So I just kind of sketched that out on the back of my burlap. And so I'll know exactly where to cut this out. And we're just gonna cover the back of the sign with this fabric and then we can decorate it even more. This was a really easy one to put together, but it turned out so cute. So that looks pretty good and we are ready to Mod Podge. Whenever I Mod Podge burlap, I do do a heavy coat because I really kind of want it to seep through that burlap and help it seal on. And I'm also trying to line up the edges. I don't really want any of that fabric to stick out once we reattach the frame. I'm gonna go over the top of it with Mod Podge as well to make sure it is good and sealed. Now, before you do your next step on this one, you're gonna wanna kinda dry that, let that set up a little bit so that your next item is going to stick. I also do a quick trim to make sure no fabric is coming over the edges. Now we can reattach the front of this. It came off really clean, only like maybe a couple tiny pieces of paper that I had to pick off of that. But we're just going to attach that with hot glue. The hot glue is gonna kind of seep down into the burlap and glue this back to the base on the back. And whenever I can pop the frame off these Dollar Tree items before I cover them with fabric or a texture on the back, it's so good when they come apart easily like that because you can kind of just pop them all back together. It's gonna look a little bit more professional, I think, in the end because I get a perfect cut and it's all sealed in there. No fraying or anything on this one. Now, this is what we're gonna put in there. Look at this little bee gnome from Dollar Tree. He is so perfect. Um, he, instead of like the bee stripes on the little gnome hat, this little guy has like a, like a, polka dot pattern but still super cute and I thought he would fit perfectly in here isn't that cute like he fits right inside the edge so I'm going to glue it to the bottom 
Also gluing it to the honeycomb fabric. And I don't think he needs anything else with his design. He's got little wings, so cute. Now I did think that, you know, the frame is that kind of unfinished wood just here on the front edges. And I like to try to paint that if I can, make it look a little bit better. So I'm just using bright yellow and a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree and sponging that on. Now, since it is like a um, kind of a MDF kind of wood, it really soaks up the paint. So as you can see, it kind of fades right in. So I'm just gonna go over all of the edges just a couple of times until it brightens it up and really kind of makes that pop and just a fun detail. Now, I think I'm gonna use this as kind of like a shelf sitter in my home. So it doesn't really need a hanger or anything on it, but um, I thought we could use some a real flower to kind of make his flower look even cooler, kind of give him that 3D vibe. So these are the little yellow wildflowers. Now I'm cutting off the stem. I thought maybe I could try gluing it on here. Usually when you cut the stem off like that, the flower kind of wants to fall apart a little bit, which is what I was finding on this one, but that's okay. I kind of want to add another layer anyway. So I'm just gonna pop another one on there and kind of like stagger them to completely cover up the flower on the back. The only thing now is I kind of need a centerpiece to that. And I just wanted something subtle and one of these little velvet thumbtacks on the Dollar Tree, I think it's gonna be perfect. Cause I can actually literally just push it in there. It's just the right size for the middle of the flower. And it's just gonna add another little texture and touch. And so it was a little hard to push in the wood. So I just use a hammer and nail that in. Isn't he so cute? I love him. He reminds me of the bee gnome I made in my previous bee tear tray video because it was a little bee gnome that had the wings and all. And he's even got like a little, you know, sign in his hand that says bee. Super cute. Love all the textures with that honeycomb background as well. And of course it's in like a honeycomb shape. They have a lot of honeycomb shape signs at the Dollar Tree. Okay, next DIY, this is gonna be super easy. I'm gonna take one of these long signs from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. This is kind of like the medium wood one. And we're gonna turn it into a vertical sign so we don't really need that hanger on that side. We kind of want it to go the other direction. And so I thought this would be a quick and easy DIY using one of those wall decals from the Dollar Tree. I have one of these extra sawtooth hangers from popping off some of the Dollar Tree canvases that I like to use. And so I just pop that on the back. Now this print fits almost perfectly on the sign, but this little bee was kind of gonna get cut off. So I think we can maybe rearrange this slightly and make this work. This is one of those peel and stick wall stickers that they seem to always have at the Dollar Tree with this cute be happy, but it's got these beautiful flowers on there as well. It's a little glossy, but I'm gonna show you how we can tone that down, kind of make it go more with the vibe, but I just kind of have align that with the top and smooth that out on there. I left a little bit of room there at the bottom just to make sure that I had enough room maybe to work our other little bumblebee in there that we cut off from the top. Just wanna make sure that it is good and down with as little bumps or anything behind it. And I think the bee's gonna work. You might need to trim it down a little bit, some of the clear pieces, so you don't really want that to overlap. And that is so cute already. Now I thought we could make it look a little bit more um, intentional, more kind of like a hand-painted sign. And so I thought we could tone it down a little bit. The first thing I do is just use a blade from the Dollar Tree and we're just gonna cut it to kind of go with the grooves in the sign. I think it's just gonna add a little bit more texture and make it look a little bit more like it is part of the sign. So that's kind of the first step I do. And then Mod Podge. Now I'm gonna go over it kind of all over cause I want like it to have like an even finish. I'm using the matte Mod Podge and I wanna to tone down that like super shiny plastic look that makes it look like a decal kind of on a wood sign, kind of marry the two pieces together and make them look better. Kind of spreading that all around with a baby wipe, 
giving it a slight distress as well and giving that a quick dry. I did notice that there was still a little bit of a sheen to this um, decal. So I am gonna go over it again with another coat of Matte Mod Podge. And you can still kind of tell that it was a decal that we used on there, but I think it helped hide it a little bit. Now, not all of these decals like this, like some of the more paper ones aren't quite so shiny. This is just kind of a clear plastic one. And so it did have a little bit more sheen than what I'm used to. So after that, I gave it a quick dry. As you can see, it kind of gave it a distressed look as well. But I think that looks really cute. That's kind of the vibe I'm going for. Then just to rough it up a little bit more, I am using one of those little sanding sponges from the Dollar Tree and kind of going all over. If I work off some of the design of the flowers and stuff like that, it's just gonna make it look a little bit more rustic and go with my vibe. I'm gonna leave like um, the wood frame on there. It's got like that two-tone wood going on. I think that looks super cute. I also kind of concentrate on the lines we cut, kind trying to distress those a little bit as well. And I think it turned out really cute. Kind of the white distress is a little bit from my excess Mod Podge, which I was kind of going for. So this is how it turned out, our little be happy sign. Isn't that easy and quick and fun? I love this Dollar Tree DIY. And it's a really cool texture on the flowers as well. So cute. I can almost get this in one shot, not quite. Okay, next DIY, I'm just gonna take one of these cutting board signs from Dollar Tree. It can be any of them. They also have them like in a farmhouse. I think I have this one left over from fall. And then I thought I would use one of these adorable little bee placemats from the kitchen section at Dollar Tree and just cover this. We can make like a really fun little bee cutting board that you could like kind of lean on your counter in your kitchen, hang on your wall. It would be super cute as well. Um, I'm just going over the actual image and I'm using an ink pen. Um, <laughs> that one wasn't working too well. And going around all the edges so I'll know where to paint uh, or to cut, <laughs> not paint. <laughs> I am doing this voiceover kind of late at night. My son graduated from high school today. Super proud of him. He graduated with high honors. He's so smart and I could not be more proud of him. We had a great time. We went out to eat. We have lots of family staying with us in town. Um, and we finished it off with a quick swim in the ocean, came home, had some graduation cake and gifts. It was really fun. He didn't want to have like a large party and I totally get it. So we had some family fun instead. So I just cut out both layers, as you can see, because the image that we're covering on the cutting board um, is got glitter, all that stuff. And I thought if I had this, then it's going to be like kind of a built in liner. Now, I kind of wish I would have done like a white fabric instead because you kind of can see that gray through the final product, but it's not too bad. So just went over the whole thing with Mod Podge, of course and then lay the liner down and on there. And I'm trying to make sure that it didn't fray too much on the edges, but we will finish that up later. Now for the first layer, I do go over the whole thing with Mod Podge. And I wanna kind of dry this section first, kind of working in layers. Once that dry, I do go over it with another layer of Mod Podge, but this is to stick on the next layer. Isn't this fabric cute? They also have like, um, the dinner plates and the salad plates. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. I love it. I did pick up one of the dish pieces and I will show you that here in just a minute. So I go over the top of that with more matte Mod Podge to seal that on. Make sure that fabric's not going anywhere and definitely gonna be just a decorative little cutting board to hang on the wall. Now, I didn't really like that the edges were kind of frayed, kind of exposed, so I thought maybe some Dollar Tree rope might do a good job of sealing that in. And that brown rope's kinda gonna go with my B vibe as well. 
I use that a lot with like the beehives and the skeps and stuff like that. So I think we can make that work if we just kind of line that all around the edges. Now I do want this to still look like a cutting board. And so it did have like a little hole in the top. And so I do want to add that back to it so that we can add a little handle to our cutting board. So just an X-Acto knife. And then I tried to kind of put like, you know, any kind of like a pencil shape forward through there. Didn't want to really take that shape too well. But what I ended up doing was just drying the Mod Podge a little bit. And then it was able to like kind of poke that hole through the fabric a little bit easier. Or it'll kind of stay open like that. Now it's time to line this with a little border of Dollar Tree rope. I work on a silicone mat, so I'm kind of doing a bead of hot glue just along the edges. I want it to kind of be on the very edges, kind of framing it out like that. It, it's so easy when you do that like on a silicone mat because you don't have to worry about your hot glue sticking to anything. Otherwise, if you're not, you're gonna wanna kind of have this on its side and kind of hot glue that to the side. So we're just gonna do that all the way around this board. I'm not really gonna add like any words or anything like that. I like that simple like gray and yellow bee and flower design. I think it's so pretty and it's gonna go great with some of the other pieces that I found. Now I thought, you know, we were already using the Dollar Tree rope, so I thought that would make a perfect handle as well. To kind of feed it through though, I put a little hot glue on the end to kind of make that easier to feed through. Then I'm just going to loop that up. I don't want to make it big knot, so what I do is I take it, tie it through, but then I only pull it through one knot just to make the knot a little bit smaller and then kind of pull that tight. Kind of made it a little longer than I wanted, so I just pull that down to shorten it a little bit. But we get a great little rope hanger that you can use to hang it, or it looks kind of just cute over to the side. Before I put the rope on there, I did go over the rope with a lighter, just kind of burnt off some of the excess, but I did notice there was still a little bit of fuzzy, so I'm just gonna kind of go around one more time with that, just to kind of clean that up a little bit more. Isn't that a cute little cutting board? I think it is so much cuter than it was before, and it's gonna go great with some of these bee pieces in my kitchen and dining room area. And this is what it looked like um, the next day after it kind of dried a little bit. See, that's where you can kind of see the gray coming through a little bit. Kind of makes it look a little distressed, which is okay. But if you want it to be like that super white, you might wanna line that with some white like fabric from the Dollar Tree underneath first. But all in all, I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about this bee DIY? Okay, I found this gold frame at the Dollar Tree and I thought it would be perfect to do something fun. It looks like a bee honeycomb design on it. And I thought we could do something creative with this. So I'm just gonna pop off the back of this and the glass, don't really need it, and then pull out the staples. Now this is a plastic frame, not wood, so you gotta be really careful when you pull these out because the plastic will kind of break on you. And I thought it'd be really cute to use some of this Dollar Tree chicken wire. It kind of looks like a honeycomb pattern, right? String that along the back and we could do kind of a fun little bee art piece, kind of like a little experimental piece here, but I think it turned out really fun. So I had a scrap piece of this leftover from my another DIY. I think one of my, what, spring chicken or maybe one of my other bee DIYs. I have used this on my bee positive sign. That turned out so cute. So just cutting out a little rectangular shape, just the right size. I can always trim it down a little bit. Now this is where I wasn't sure if this was gonna work. Cause whenever I work with chicken wire, I like to use my staple gun cause I find that's the easiest way to secure it to the frame. Now I was worried cause it was plastic I wasn't sure if you could staple into the plastic, but they had used staples on the corners. So I thought maybe we might be able to make this work. Now, the only thing is I'm trying to go in that thicker part there, um, but I do miss sometimes when I'm trying to get this on here. And it did cause me a little issue. Like I missed um, one of those right there because otherwise the frame is a little too thin and you're gonna be able to see that from the other side, but 
we're going to do our best here. I wish this was a, like, I wish this was a wood. I think it would have held up a little bit better. But don't be like me if you're using a staple gun. Don't miss. <laughs> but I did trim off the excess chicken wire. And it gave me that pattern. At this point, I was like, you know, I think that, you know, it's not too bad where I have missed if you saw any dots. But later I decided I didn't really like that part of it, but I'll show you how I fix it. Now, this is another one of those little wood bee ornaments from the spring and garden section at Dollar Tree. And we're just gonna glue it down like raw wood side up. I kind of wanted this to be a sculptural piece where the back is open. It looks like a honeycomb. It's got the honeycomb frame and it's got the bee on there. But I also want them to be kind of like all one color. So once I get them all connected, stapled and glued, I'm gonna use that same metallic gold spray paint. I'm gonna take this outside and give it a quick spray paint. And let me show you how it looks with the gold chicken wire, the gold bee, the gold frame, isn't it cute? Now this is where I noticed, like where I missed on my staples that you could kind of see them through. I really like it as is, but the staples were kind of bothering me. So this is another honeycomb ribbon that I found at Dollar Tree. This is the thinner one. Um, then the larger one that we're gonna use here in a second on the tear tray. And I thought maybe I could just kind of do like a border on the inside of the frame, because that is where all of my staples are. So just gonna disguise that. I cut one long enough for the top and the bottom. And I don't want any like hot glue coming through that ribbon. So I decided to use a Dollar Tree tacky glue to glue that on there smoothly. I also need to kind of frame it out on the side. So I'm just gonna cut it long enough to kind of overlap top to bottom and glue that on each side as well. Kind of covered up my damage, added another fun like yellow or gold element to it. So I don't know. I thought this was a fun piece and I had a lot of fun putting it together. I like the cold, the gold chicken wire. I think that turned out cool. So just using a tacky glue to glue those last two pieces on. Now, if you see the little wood ornament, I kind of had the same issue that I had before where even though I filled, this time I filled in the hole with some hot glue on there, you could still see that hole on there. So I like to finish that off with a little bow to disguise it. I didn't really want to use burlap on this one because we're going for like that gold, bright yellow look. And so I actually have some like yellow and white string like twine that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I thought that would look really cute with that yellow and white ribbon as well. And so I'm just gonna take a piece of that. We're gonna tie a really simple little bow, something very tiny. It's not gonna stand out too much, but just something cute to kind of cover that up because I am terrible at filling those holes in. I think I'm just not patient enough. If you spackle it, sand it, let it dry, do all those steps, you might have better luck. But we're just gonna do a quick fix. I also wanted to do a little hanger for this DIY, so I thought we could use that string for it as well. And so once I get my little bow on there, we're just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use that, just tie it on the chicken wire. I might, I might as well, I don't really have anything left to tie to at that point. And so I just kind of feed it in through the sides here and just tie it off into a quick little hanger. And this was really fun. I liked, I kind of took the inspiration from the gold pieces from the tear tray. And I kind of wanted to see if I could kind of pull that off because I liked that frame. So I wanted to do something fun and be like with that. And that is the final product. I kind of wish that my stapler, maybe I need shorter staples, that it didn't really cause any damage around the edges there, but we kind of made it work. And a stick around, cause we are gonna, we're gonna stage this entire be a tear tray. And I'm gonna show you how I decorate it. It's gonna go on my kitchen table. I think it's gonna look great with all of the bee DIYs that we've already done this year. But I wanted to show you some finds too. So I'm gonna, I was telling you about the bee dishware. This is the coffee mug 
So I didn't really need coffee mugs, so I only like really picked up one. They kind of go on my B coffee bar that I already have because it's so cute. But they also had the plates. Oh, they were so pretty. Um, I almost couldn't resist, but I really did not need plates, so I did not pick up any of those. But I thought the mug was super cute, so I wanted to show that to you and some other finds. Like they also have like that matching print that we did the little cutting board on and just a dish towel, which is always fun. I always like using these seasonal towels like for my kitchen because, you know, they're only a dollar. If they get stained and stuff, it's no big deal. You can always trash them if you need to, but I thought that was super cute. And then I also picked up four more of the placemats that match it since this tear tray is going to be on my kitchen table right in front of that coffee bar that is the B theme as well. So I thought I needed B placemats as well. It was going to tie it all in. And for $1.25 a piece, that is a great deal. So I'll also show you what they look like on my table in my dining room. And I think they turned out really cute. I've got like um, some graduation decorations there in the background because of course we just had a little graduation party here today. And let's get started on that B tear tray. So I tied that little yardstick to the top um, like he's kind of flying. Here is our little DIY burlap pennant banner with the little bees on there as well with the little honeycomb ribbon on the bottom. And we can start staging this. So here is our little DIY rope beehive covered in our little wood bees. We had that little honeycomb trinket dish. I think that's gonna work well on top. I kinda wanna balance it out, maybe a taller piece on each side. So here is that little light up, be kind, be sweet, be humble box. And that little honey pot with the little bee charm that we filled with yellow flowers. And then um, we were gonna use that lamb's ear as filler. I think it's a nice touch. It's kind of like a soft green, so it's not gonna compete too much with the, the yellows. And onto the bottom tier. We have a little bit more room to work with down here and we can start decorating it. Here is that little be kind stepping stone that we repainted. I think it looks super cute with a little be a stripe hat and he's a nice background piece and then that little gold bee that we got at the target dollar spot i was afraid you weren't going to be able to see it so i'm going to kind of prop him up a little bit on some of that lamb's ear um so you can kind of see him a little bit better and over to the side here here is that little honeycomb candle where we made the little candle holder it's so rustic and cute just a nice, subtle little bee touch. And my favorite piece, the little bee birdcage. I still can't believe that was only $1.25. It is so cute. And it looks great with the greenery inside. What do you guys think? Here is that little burlap honeycomb sign that we made with the little bees on front as well. And we still have a little bit of room here, that bee kind. This is a nice size for a tear tray. It fits nicely. It's got like a really good height. You can kind of layer it behind pieces like that um, for a fun background. And you could put some smaller pieces in front of it like this little honeycomb candle holder as well. And just kind of move it around, make it all fit. <laughs> And just a few more spaces left. We have our little honey pot that we made with the wax warmer with like the fake honey like a dripping over the side. I will have to get some of those colored hot glue sticks because that would make that even easier. I've seen people use it and then I don't know why I've never picked any of those up, but that would be good as well. And then we're just going to start filling in any of the areas that kind of need something with some more of that lamb's ear. Just kind of any sections where you're going to be able to see like the wood part. I always like to use a filler because it's going to make your tear tray look a lot fuller. And I'm going to give you a quick preview how that turned out, but we're going to have the final reveal. We're going to show all 23 Dollar Tree B DIYs and finds today. 
and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment your favorite DIY or find below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers. Hey guys, I also wanted to let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can support me here at Crafty Beach. You're gonna get early ad-free access to my videos, including other perks like shout outs in my videos. And I have a nine Crafty Beach my members that I would like to thank today. Huge thank you to Coastal Couple. I am Mojo Jojo, Jamie Job, Karen O'Haran, Ann, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Pamela Bergeron, and Susan Edmonds. Okay, it's time for the final reveal. Here we go. You know it still hurts a little bit, but not that much. Cause if you want somebody else, who am I to judge? I've been thinking about you all the time, but that's all right. I'm starting to get used to it, think I'll survive. I met you in the summer, when you left it was cold. Said we loved one another, guess that we were wrong. I met you in the summer, our love was out of control. Talking to myself now and then I'll try to laugh but I'll cry a bit as well I was never any good at being away from you I met you in the summer When you left it was cold Said we loved one another Guess that we were wrong I met you in the summer Our love was out of control I've been going crazy without you I'm so alone I met you in the Starting to get used to it, think I'll survive. I met you in the summer when you left, it was cold. Said we loved one another, guess that we were wrong. I met you in the summer, our love was out of control. I've been going crazy without you so long. I met you in the Couldn't really make you stay, so what to do? 
I'm just staring at my walls and talking to myself now and then I'll try to laugh but I'll cry a bit as well I was never any good at being away from you I met you in the summer Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, be sure to leave a B emoji in the comments below. And if you would like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.